and welcome back everybody to Broken Sword, Shadow of the Templars. Once again, I am Pete, and once again I am joined by... Viv. And when we uh, last left, our hero George just got back from Spain, having uh, rediscovered uh, the chalice of the Devascan Chalice family, which has been lost for years. So now, we're going to head back to, uh, to Montfasson, see if we can find any more developments there. And, oh look, developments. Oh god, another clown, what the... <laughs> I once read a list of... Don't it did, done obviously. Story. Yeah, we need to report this guy pretty sharpish. Hello again, officer. Hello again, monsieur. No, we haven't got it yet. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. <laughs> there was a small crowd of five sightseers. It's a weird thing. But you can take the most intelligent people in the world, put them in their vacation duds, and hey presto, they look like morons. Yeah, Why is that? It's a strange phenomenon, that. I had no desire to talk to the crowd. The juggler was good. Why he couldn't put that kind of application into getting a real job, <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> Maybe he just liked dressing up like a horse's ass. Gee, he's judgmental much, George. Yeah. Uh, let's have a word with him and hope he doesn't blow the place up. Hey, you with the balls. Freezing. <laughs> the balls. <laughs> we. Uh, yeah, let's ask this uh, street performer about the Knights Templar. I'm sure he's an authority on the subject. Of course. What do you know about the Knights Templar? Le Templier? Ah, the last Grandmaster, Jacques Dumoulin, was burnt. On an island in the Seine, in 1314. Wow. You're pretty well educated for a juggler. No, monsieur. I read it on that board over there. Of course. Well, let's talk about juggling, man. Why not? How did you learn to be a juggler? Juggler? What is this juggler? It's you. You juggle, that makes you a juggler. No! I am a jongleur. A jongler? What's that? Mon dieu! A jongleur is an artist, a master of the contragravitic aerobaletic mysteries. In centuries past, the courts of the crowned of Europe had the jongleurs, witty erudite men to whom the monarchs turned in their hours of need. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. Our enemies are at the borders. Plague ravages the land, and the peasants are revolting. Thank God we've got Chuckles the Jongler to throw his balls around. I don't think so. Yeah, all well, sounds like a lot of balls, if you ask me. Yeah. That juggling doesn't look so difficult. Oh, it does not, does it not? Perhaps you feel you could do better. No, I'll give it a try. Be my guest. I had no idea what I was doing. But this guy was obviously an idiot, so how difficult could it be? A lot more difficult than I thought. That's how difficult. Still, it was my big chance to be derided by complete strangers. Not so easy after all, is it? No, I guess not. Well, rightly humiliated, let's slink off. Mm -hmm. Well, we have uh, more stuff to, uh, to show him, though. Shall we try and offer him the red nose? Yeah, sure. Look, a red nose. Ah, you are a clown. A clown? No, if so, you would be a much better jongleur. For a moment, an idea capered around near the spotlight of my attention, but fell down the pothole of abstraction before I could focus on it. Mm. And that is the only clue we get to the puzzle for how to get rid of this guy. Oh, Become a killer clown. <laughs> Kill all of the jongleurs. Yes, yeah, problem solved. And the tourist as well. Why not? Throw yeah, them right. in. In right. for a penny. Right. Well, should we try showing him anything else? I don't think he's going to know anything. No, unlikely. Catch you later. Au revoir, monsieur. Oh, and Zenly, yet another character voiced by Colin McFarlane. Remember the... Uh, the uh, uh, the concierge from the start of the game and uh, yeah. uh, 
was it Mr. O'Brien in Ireland? Mm-hmm. Again, this game didn't have a particularly large cast. Hello again, officer. Hello again, monsieur. I wish to report this, gentlemen. What do you think of the juggler? Ah, he is excellent, most watchable. But he's blocking the thoroughfare and obstructing traffic. So? He is amusing. The traffic isn't. If he wants to block it, who am I to say no? You're a cop. Ah, oui. So I am. Ah, well. Yeah, dedicated. There is logic in what he says. So you're not going to do anything about this guy? No. He probably doesn't even have a license. Ah, a license? This I had not considered. So what are you going to do? The instant I return to the station, I shall check. Return to the station? Why not just ask him? And spoil his concentration? <laughs> what kind of a barbarian do you take me for? Oh, fair enough. Interesting. So back to murdering everyone in the room. <laughs> Uh, right. There's another slightly pearly t uh, signposted uh, puzzle here, because we need to show him the red nose. Does this red nose mean anything to you? Ah, you are a clown. Do I look like a clown? No, although you juggle like one. Now, if I'd known you were a clown, it would have been amusing, and not a humiliation for you. What do you mean? Who ever heard of a plain clothes clown? He had a point. So you're saying that if I juggle badly with a red nose, I'd be the king of comedy. But if I juggle badly without it... You look like a pathetic loon. <laughs> oui, monsieur. You have it. Okay. So, see, that's the problem is, uh, the reason this is a pretty signpost puzzle is... Uh, we have to show him the red nose, even if we'd spoken to him about it already before. So, oh! Um, um, I don't think there's any other objects in the game, I think, apart from the showing the picture of Cam to the guy at the costume shop, yeah. that, that actually get different results if you try it again. Okay. I'll see you around. Oui, monsieur. I'll be there. But anyway, now we have the solution. Juggling but uh, better with a or juggling juggling better with a red nose will in some way give birth to progress. Let's find out how. Okay. We. Oui? What is it this time? Let's try it again. I'd like to have another try at juggling, please. You have gone on a crash course, Babs. No, I just had an insight into presentation. Huh? Allow me to demonstrate. The balls, please. If you insist on completing your humiliation, monsieur. Okay, now for my secret weapon. The juggler was speechless with rage. You could have mistaken him for a mime. And without a word, he collected his balls... and left in a fury. Hey! You forgot one of your balls! Hey! Oh, but he didn't hear. Better still, deprived of his entertainment, the gendarme decided maybe he ought to do some policing for a change. Oh. It's not like him. He's out of the way now, at least. Oh, you can get your tool out. Yeah. In public? What do you think of me? <laughs> Yeah, speaking of tools, uh, speaking of tools, we now have balls as well. Oh. Bright red ball I've got from the juggler. I just want to meet him and see the coat. I just want to see the coat. <laughs> yeah, I mean that is taking the piss, really. Now I mean, that would I mean, smell the coat. First. I mean, I mean, I mean, all of this—that's fair enough. But this is the straw that would break the camel's back. Absolutely right. Oh, but anyway, I'm now watching all as we produce a massive tool from a tiny pocket. <sighs> Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> Am I dying into the sewers? And the people for the are just watching. The people mm -hmm. are just watching. Yep. <laughs> Maybe they think it's part of the show. Maybe. Ooh. 
This is like a more sophisticated sewer, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Is that a boat? It is a boat. No, don't go there yet, George. We have to look at this. If I wanted to get deeper into these catacombs, I was going to have to get onto that path. If the near edge hadn't crumbled away, I could have jumped it easily. Now, I wasn't so sure. No. Right. Can we make it? I think we can make it. I don't. Right. Let's go. He's going to go. Okay, it's dun, dun, long jump dun, dun, time. Dun, 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 dun. Here George goes. Dies tragically. Do I look crazy or something? Yes, you do. Well, you did when you had the clown nose on. Anyway, let's have a look at this boat. A weird little boat lay tied up. I guess they used it to get maintenance crews around. Either that or the Phantom of the Opera was somewhere near. On the boat was a winching machine. There was a handle in the boat that fed out chain with a hook on the end. Hmm. Okay. Amused? Yeah. He could do yeah. that all day. That's ours of entertainment right there. He needs a telly. <laughs> Let's have a look at the hook. A hook dangled from the end of a heavy-duty chain. The hook was held rigidly by the tightly wound chain. There were three arches, each with an inscription. Now, the, uh, I've said before this isn't an actual location, but I'm, if memory serves, this uh, whole underground thing has some basis in fact, because there's like uh, catacombs, uh, obviously underground in, uh, in Paris, and mm -hmm. they do uh, tours of them quite regularly. Yeah. There. I think there have been uh, reports of people getting lost and dying on the tour. Oh, awesome. I could see a faded inscription. My medieval French isn't much, but the few words I understood seem to say, this is where the gallows used to stand. Maybe. Right. How haunted is this place? Extremely. The inscription was hard to read, but I made out Templier and something about Innocence. And the last one. The inscription was undecipherable. The plaster had cracked and was falling away. I wondered why. Could there be something behind it? There could be. And now we finally get to use, uh, use a bit of brute force with the lifting key. First, let's try this one. Yes, it will work. That sounded pretty solid. Okay. Inscription number two. Nothing hollow there. And finally, inscription number three. Hey, that's hollow. <gasps> it was time for some brutal destruction. I hope it was worth the wait. Right, what do we have in here? I'd poked a hole in an historical site. Yeah. If any archaeologists came by, they'd lynch me for this. Let's go and have a word with Andre, shall we? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, Close up, good. I could see the plaster was thinner where I'd broken through. And behind it were some cogs and a lever. Here goes. Hey, cool. It's a hidden passage. Inside the hole, I could see one of the cogs had come loose and jammed the mechanism solid. So this is a, okay. this is a detail I quite like. You know when, when like Indiana Jones movies and whatever, mm -hmm. we have like uh, ancient contraptions that have been there for thousands of years and always work perfectly. Oh, they do, yeah, they always work perfectly. Yeah. There's a bit of you know reality ensues here. Of, of course, it's been there for six hundred years. It's going to be rusted to hell and back. So, we need to find a way to, uh, to unjam the cogs and get it open the rest of the way. Uh, and what do we have nearby? There's, there's a hook and a... A winching machine. Thank you. Yeah. Continuing with the brutal destruction angle. So now 
have uh, we've left the hook down we can pick it up and attach it to this inside the hole yeah, nothing further to add okay right and here we go oh oh like a charm The door mechanism was trashed. It that would take a blacksmith much. or an engineer to do anything with that. There was a crack in the wall. Through it, I could see a glimmer of natural light. Oh. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to save because we're at yet another point where it's possible to die. Oh, we don't want to die. So. Not twice. So. At the bottom of the steps, I could see a glow. It seemed a good moment to be cautious. Yeah, now in fairness, this one is very well signposted. Firstly, if, you, if we look at the, uh, the passage, we have George saying that. Yeah. And if we try to go down... <coughs> I could hear voices from the lit area. Then we get our second warning. So really, if you fall for it at this point, you've really no one but yourself to blame. Mm. I have no one but myself to blame. Uh, does he die tragically? This was it. The conspiracy was revealed. Okay, nobody move. I'm making a citizen's arrest. At last, I had them. I could see the fear in their eyes as their little scheme came to pieces. You're all going away for a very long time. And you can just drop those guns. You're impressing nobody. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Guns, plural. Uh, just, just the sheer dark humor in that. Just the yeah. Gilligan cup to a grave mm -hmm. digger. Just that, was, that was so funny. Yeah. <laughs> right, let's try a, a more cautious approach this time. Cooey! <laughs> I all get it. Aon calling. Right. Let's have a look at what we're wandering into this time. Oh, and now, yeah. plot dump. In the beginning was the end. An end wrought by our enemies began our darkness. <laughs> In the end will be a beginning. An end to our enemies heralds our new day. Report. The military establishments are in flux. The end of the Cold War has left them with no clear goal and as obvious targets for budgetary cuts. We have successfully promoted a sense of betrayal in the upper echelons. They feel that the politicians have cast them adrift. The pattern is emerging our time is now! Good. Mademoiselle? Governments are giving the corporations more respect than their own citizens. A groundswell of dissatisfaction and dissidents right, is growing. Have a look around while this is going on. See if you recognize them. large and complex for their own executive to control them. A blind belief in market forces is accelerating this trend the world over. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. The global population's belief in those that govern it has never been lower. We have inculcated a sense of immediacy and action over forethought and planning in all the major governments. Where they exactly are, are you from, sir? Decisions that cannot be completed or revoked without appearing foolish. The pattern is emerging. Our time is now. Excellent. The tired old governments are dying a slow death from their own incompetence and our machinations. The millennium is almost upon us and everything is in place for the rise of our new order. Almost. Poor 
professor. Where is the broken sword? Ah, as we discussed last time, with the loss of the manuscript, our search is a decorovery hindered. And as discussed last time, you have been furnished with a dramatically increased budget. What have you been doing with our money, Professor? We are working on the principle that the Templars... <coughs> that is to say, our predecessors... Hold on. These are the Templars? Must have left a trail when they were hiding the clues to the sort of the phonic location. I have a small army of historians and archaeologists ferreting out that trail. I trust these historians and archaeologists are more trustworthy than your friend Pigram. Pigram was loyal. He tried to protect the Lokmarn gem when the Hashashin came near. And failed. And don't call that Syrian maniac the Hashashin. He's an assassin. Plain and simple. That's not what he believes. He actually thinks. Silence! Do I have to remind you that we have a sacred duty? A trust? When Philippe attempted to destroy the Order, we lost the sword and our power with it. Now we have the opportunity to reforge it. But time is short. We need results. Not petty bickering. Not excuses. Now, Professor Baphomet. Yes, of course, my apology. We will find Baphomet and the sword, manuscript or no. We have already found another element actually within Paris. Excellent. What is it? Well, we're not exactly sure at present. Ha! But I have my best people working on it. You would do well not to criticize others, Eklund. At least I have not murdered one of our own. Of course. That guy was the bogus doctor in the hospital. Marquet was a liability. Eklund dealt with him on my orders. I beg your pardon, Grandmaster. I did not mean to. Have you any good news for us, Professor? We already know three of the elements. We know that Klausner had obtained the lens before he vanished. Where was he? Syria. We know that he arrived, but after that, nothing. The assassin. I fear so. It's a shame. Klausner was a good operative. So there's a pretty major plot development. Yeah. yeah. So, <coughs> so modern day assassins and modern day Templars, and once again, this was years before Assassin's Creed. <laughs> so, so did you recognize anyone besides Eklund, who George uh, pointed out? Um, the professor guy. Yeah. And, uh... Remember him? He was the Nobel Prize winner from the hotel. <coughs> so. Yeah. I think. It's an idea I kind of wish they'd gone a bit further with, because you know, we re uh, we only uh, really had met two of those people. I think uh, that scene would have had a lot of impact if it had just been loads of people we we'd mm -hmm. met and just minor roles throughout the game. Yeah. And you're just like, holy shit, they were hiding in plain sight all this time. But, yeah. But, oh uh, well, maybe they, maybe they were just pushed for time or budget or something, I don't know. But anyway, we have to look a second time, mm -hmm. and then, after that, it's safe to go down. This will be our last meeting in person until we locate the sort of Baphomet. I hope that I don't need to emphasize the importance of finding it. Without it, our endeavors come to nothing. With the sword reforged, we will have the power to sweep the stage of all opposition. The new millennium will belong to us. The next time that we meet, it will be to become the princes of this world. And princesses. Sorry, and princesses.
don't you? It really tends to add in a splash sound effect there. <laughs> <laughs> and all of them capsized. Yay! Yeah, so anyway, now they've buggered off, we can explore their hideout in peace. Place. The water seemed to belong to an underground river or something. It was way too deep to belong to the catacombs. Oh. Let's go no first. No way look. was I going out there without a boat. Okay, fair enough. So what do we have here? On the circle's circumference were the Templar seal and two Latin phrases. Non omnis moriar and clarior a tenebris. I shall not die completely, the brighter from the darkness. There was a large circle marked out on the floor with a stump in the middle. Around the circle, I could see words inlaid into the stone. Whoops, I think they got the uh, uh, slight examine and uh, heavy examine mixed up there, Revolution. Good. See, there was, was a large left. circle marked out on the floor with a stump around yeah, the... already. But anyway. In the middle of the circle was a stump of stone, a shaft of daylight from the world above lancing down to touch it. I noticed three small notches around the edge of the stump's top. Bing! Oh, three small edges. What do we think? Yeah. In the middle of the circle was a, a shaft. Yes, we will not. Can we not the tripod's it? feet fitted neatly into the notches on the top of the stump. And then, obviously, the jam. The light falling from above struck the gem and scattered in five neat rays, and each ray picked out a letter. Starting from the seal, I could read. M A R I B Marib. Now all I had to do was figure out what the heck that meant. Still haven't learned how to knock. Nico, I've seen them. Who? The Templars. I spied on their meeting in the catacombs. And you saw the Knight Templar? I saw a bunch of guys masquerading as Templars. They're after something called the Sword of Baphomet. The bogus doctor was there, the guy who killed Marquet. The manuscript is the key, just as we thought. It shows the way to the broken sword, whatever that is. And how does the assassin fit into all this? He's out to stop them. These Neo-Templars, they're men and women in influential positions. Don't you see? Plantar was one of them. The assassin killed him for the manuscript to stop them finding the sword. But now we have got the manuscript. Yes. So, how do they hope to find the sword? I don't know. They said something about a lens and a guy called Klausner who's gone to Syria. But they didn't seem to realize the significance of the very site of their meeting. You see, after they'd gone, I discovered a stone pedestal and a carved inscription. I set up the gem on the tripod, directly below a beam of light. The gem split the beam and lit the letters M-A-R-I-B. Marip is a village in Syria. Then the Neo-Templars are ahead of us. Klausner beat me to it. You're not thinking of going there yourself, are you? Why not? These guys are crazy and dangerous. That reminds me, you should leave the gem here. Okay. What about the tripod? I'll send it back to Andre, anonymously. Well, not much to add to the conversation apart from that, so... I swear. Mm -hmm. so. Yep, we're now shy one, uh, one tripod and one gem. Okay. So, 
slightly more believable that we can fit all that in our pockets, but yeah. not much. But anyway, moving on. Do you think I should go to Marib? Thierry is a long way, Georges. It's fine. He's, he has one change of foot. No, he doesn't. Do you think he just has like a massive wardrobe just with hundreds of copies of the same, you know, same outfit? Probably, actually. <laughs> it's fine. He's going to the desert wearing the same clothes he's wearing in Paris. Nothing bad can happen. Well, we do see a change of clothes later on in the series. So. Oh, <laughs> So yeah, there's something to uh, whet your appetite for the future. But let's see. Nothing yet. Ah, now we go back here. Remember this guy? Yeah. From the first time we came to the station. Mm -hmm. Hi, it's me again. Again? Yes, I spoke to you earlier. But of course. It is Monsieur Hardy, Stobart, uh, George Stobart. Right. So the big question, where is Inspector Moo? Uh, Sergeant Moo, sorry. Where's Sergeant Moo? Sergeant Moo? You haven't heard? Heard what? Has something happened to him? Moo is dead. What? You're kidding. No, Monsieur. That's... How? Why? The death of a policeman never comes as a surprise, but... Always as a shock. But Sergeant Mo? He was so... I know. I know. He was as flexible as a riot baton. Yet his heart was as warm as a freshly extracted urine sample. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's how he would have wanted to be remembered. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm. How did he die? Mm. Well, and Russ was there, but we can't speak to him for now, so... Thanks for your help, officer. All we can do is move on. That's a shock. Yeah. Well, they do go for a major shift in tone here by killing off the comic relief. Yeah. Showing the game of stop taking prisoners. Mm. So now, this is the, uh, the furthest we go in this game, all the way to... Uh, which I, I believe also the sadly fictional village of Marib in Syria. They're all fictional. You can't even do like a pilgrimage to these places. I know. <laughs> but believe me, I would. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's part of the reason I was so pissed off to find out the Hotel Ubu wasn't real. I want to stay in that place. Yeah, me too. But anyway, I think that's a, uh, a good uh, break point to, uh, to stop for now, so... Next time we'll be heading off to sunny Syria where, we'll, where we will meet the best character in this game. I can't wait. I'm so excited. Until then, say goodnight, Viv. Goodnight, Viv. Goodnight, everybody.